I get asked a lot, what's the best way to study? This I cannot answer for you because everybody's different and I don't know you, so I can't give a judgment on that. Um, you got to choose the best way for you. Some will go down the app route, some will go down the book, some will do online, i.e. using YouTube, for example. If it was me studying for my theory test, I will be doing the apps because I'm a visual person and apps has a lot of visual stuff rather than the books, as I'm not a book reader. So you got to make that choice for you. But in this video, I'm going to share some hints, tips and how best to prepare for your theory test and pitfalls to avoid to give you the best possible chance of passing your theory test first time. Before I get into the information I'm about to share with you, I just want to give you some background information on me because a lot of viewers think I'm just Joe Blogs who's made a YouTube channel to help you pass your theory test. Yes, I've made a YouTube channel to help you pass your theory test, but I'm not Joe Bloggs. My name is Dorian, Dorian West. I am a practicing driving instructor of 30 years. So I do teach people to drive. I specialize in intensive courses. So if a student comes on my course and wants the full package, they get the theory side of it as well. They normally do two hours a day, Monday to Thursday. And then we try to book the theory test for them on a Friday morning where possible. So they do eight hours technically studying and they have a one-to-one -one session with me every day as well. And then we move on to the driving side of it. So for the last 10 years, I've been teaching the theory side of it in the classroom. So I have picked up tips, hints along the way, looking, I know what the DVSA is looking for. And on the flip side, the bonus of um, having the YouTube channel, I am now licensed by the DVSA to use the official theory test questions. I will add the theory test questions are sample questions. There's a lot of you out there thinking it's still the real questions. So when you go for the real test, it's going to be slightly worded differently. And there's going to be questions that you may never have seen before. So I will repeat. The theory test is sampled questions and I am also licensed to use those samples questions, which I will be using in the course that I've got coming out in the very near future. So if you're interested in the course to pass your theory test, um, go to my website, www.drivingtheoryuk.com and register your interest so when the course is released you get to be notified about that. So I'm just going to share some information with you, just a general chat basically. It's not listed in any particular order and you can take the hints and tips that's relevant to you and avoid some of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about. So the first one is always be prepared for the theory test itself. I know a lot of you from the information on the comments in the YouTube, you're cramming last minute binge watching my videos it's working out for some of you because you're passing and for the rest of you you're failing the reason why you're failing because you wasn't prepared binge watching is not the best way forward that will come back and haunt you one way or the other because technically you're not taking the information in to absorb it to fully understand it so when you go for your driving lessons your knowledge is going to be weak because any pupils that come on my course who didn't pass with me on their fairy tales I know if their knowledge is really weak and we spend quite a bit at the side of the road to recap on the theory, what certain road markings mean, what certain signs means. So I would suggest you be prepared. I'm not going to go too much detail into this. The reason being I've already done a video on how to study, i.e. the category. So let's just take a look briefly at what I'm talking about. The theory test is made up of 14 categories. I would always suggest you do all 14 categories first and do them in order. So for example, on your app, you go to the settings, you can choose any particular category. I will do it in the order it's laid out. It's done in a logical order, alertness, attitude, documents, and so on and so on. So your theory test is going to be made up of the 14 categories. 50 questions will be chosen across the board from this. So that's what I would suggest you do. Study the all 14 categories and then move on to mock tests. So that's my first hint for you. Java tip I will give you is don't make it personal. Don't make the test about you. The fairy test isn't about you. It has to be a generic answer. So no matter what part of the country you're taking the test in, it's going to be the same answer across the board. And I'll give you a brief example. One of the questions that comes up in the classroom, what's this? How would you know what the speed limit is for a particular road? The answer is street lights. I've had pupils say, well, where I live, the speed limit is 20 miles an hour. You've made it 
personal. So you chose an answer that's personal to you. It has to be a generic answer. So it's street lights. So no matter where you're taking that theory test, the answer is going to be street lights. So it's the same for everyone. So don't make the theory test personal to you. And don't overthink it. So if they've given you information of A, B, C, D, that's all they've given you. I've had pupils turn around, but what if it's raining? But what if this and what if that? So once you start adding what if this and what if that, it's a different question, which means you're now going to choose a different answer. So the information they gave you, that's all you want to work with. Do not add anything in. Do not take anything out. Just keep it straightforward. Keep it very, very simple the other little tip i will give you and probably one of the biggest ones other than being prepared is look for clues you've got to stay calm enough when you go in the test to look for clues in the question is what i call golden nuggets and let me give you a few examples on this so for example this question what does the line across the road at the entrance of a roundabout mean the key word there is roundabout it's a clue what do you do at roundabouts? You give way to the right. So that now alerts you to a possible answer. So the option on this one, or the correct answer on this one, should I say, is give way to traffic from the right because the image gave you the clue. Also, if you're using apps, another little tip, you can always enlarge the image to get, get a closer view. So those, if you're using the app, the driving test success I'm talking about, I'm not sure if the other apps allow you to do that. Another little tip, let me read the question on this one. What should you do if your mobile phone rings while you're driving or riding? If it's got safe, safety, safely in the answer, you have to shortlist it as a possibility. It doesn't always work, but then sometimes when you shortlist it, it's got a 50-50 chance. So the answer here is leave it until you have stopped in a safe place because that's what the theory test is about. They're looking for a safe outcome or a controlled outcome. So I repeat, if it's got safe, safely, safety in the answer, you have to list it as a possibility. I will go on record, it doesn't always work, but it can ease the stress because it normally leaves you two possible answers when you do that. So the answer will be this one. In this example, it doesn't work. So what's like to happen if you use a hands-free phone while you're driving? If you read the first line, it will improve your safety. It's got safety in there. But common sense says if you're using a mobile phone, even if it's hands-free, it's not going to improve safety. So we know that answer can't be correct. If you go to the bottom one, it's going to divert your attention because you're having a conversation. Yes, it's hands-free, but you're going to be diverted because you're having a conversation. So this is an exception where it doesn't work. So like I said, I will go on record to say it doesn't work, but you can shortlist it as a possibility. Other little tip I will give you is if you don't know the answer, flag it, move on. Don't stress over it. Just flag it, move on. So when the test is, when you finish your 50th question, you go back to just the flagged questions. I'm going to give you two tips on this next example. Three, so I'm gonna give you two examples with this one. Which plate may appear with this road sign? Let's just assume we didn't know which plate appears with this road sign. So all you're gonna do is flag, move on. But you've got to still answer it. Flag, move on. And then once you finish the 50th question, you can go back to it. So the second tip I will do, again, let's just assume we didn't know what the answer is. Let's work backwards. Let's work out what it can't be and let's see how that works out for us. So soft verge, it doesn't give an example of a soft verge in that image. Low bridge is the one that I ticked. There's no height suggestion. So we don't, so we know it can't be that because it doesn't tell us what height or how low that bridge is. Humps for half a mile. As much as it ain't got half a mile in it, there is a picture of a hump. So we can now change low bridge to that one. And then hump bridge. There's no white bit in the middle. It's just solid black. So that means it's, you can go over, but you can't go under. So that's how you'd work that out. So reverse engineer, work backwards on what it can't be. Sometimes you're left with a 50-50. Sometimes by default, like on this one, you're left with the correct answer. And then you just unflag, move on.
The test is 57 minutes long. The theory side of it, that is, I'm talking about. Has perception is half an hour. But once you click the has perception, that just goes on and on and on. You can't do much with that. But with the um, with the theory side of it, you've got 57 minutes. Take your time. Read the questions carefully. I would read it to me personally. I'll be reading it two or three times because I've got dyslexia. So I'll read it two or three times to make sure it's sense. And then I will also do the answers two or three times. Also, when you do the answer, so you read the question, go to your answer. Don't just answer, move on. I would go question, answer, and see if it makes sense. Because sometimes people just move on, but the answer doesn't make sense with the question. Um, so yeah, question, answer, and then see if your answer makes sense with the question and then move on. Otherwise, flag it and then move on. So take your time. There's a lot of students that come on my course and doing that 10 minutes, 12 minutes. Guess what the result is? They're failing the mock test in the classroom. It's only when I get them to slow down, they start to realise, hold on a minute, I'm not reading the questions carefully. I'm not reading the answers um, carefully or they're misclicking the answer. They thought they clicked the correct one, but they clicked the wrong one. So take your time. There's no rush for the test. And also another tip for you. Remember when you're doing your mock test, you are trying to practice and perfect your skill that you're going to use in a real test. You can't turn around, which I get a lot in the classroom. Yeah, but I'm not going to be that quick in the real test, you are, you can't switch on and off. That's the whole point of mock test is to practice what you're going to preach. So if you're going to be fast in your mock test, you're going to be fast in a real test because your brain doesn't slow down because you haven't given the chance to practice that. So practice what you're going to preach in the real test. Slow yourself down. There is no rush. The other tip I would give you, the case studies, watch the case study videos two or three times or maybe more if necessary. So when you get to the 48th question, 48, 49 and 50 are case study the videos watch the videos two or three times to take the information in so let me give an example of what i'm talking about. this question you want to travel on the a61 which lane should you use at the roundabout so let's just play the video so in the classroom the pupils play it once and they normally go for the middle lane for example but let's play that back again did you see it? Let's just rewind it. And we're looking for the A61. Did you see it? If not, let me enlarge it so you can see it. And I'm going to just rewind it back. A61 is the left lane and middle lane. When the pupils do this in the classroom, they don't see that it's two lanes for going straight at A61 because I only watched the video once. I'll give you another example. In this example, it says, what hazard do you need to look out for as you drive under the bridge? So let's just play the video. And the common answer on this one is a narrowing of, narrowing of the road. So the road gets narrow. That's the common answer on this one. But let me just pause it there. I'm going to rewind it back. Let me just read the question again, breaking it down. What hazard do you need to look out for as you drive under the bridge? Now, if the, that was the hazard looking for as an, a narrow road, there would be a triangle sign with a narrowing of the road, but there is no triangle sign. So again, if you don't play the video two or three times, you're going to miss it. So let me pause at the right place. Did you see it? Or do you see it? Let me enlarge it so you can see it clearly. Let's just rewind it back because you can't see it on there. Oops. There you go. The sign to the left, pedestrians walking in the road because there's no pavement as you got under the bridge. That's the key. The triangles warned you about it. But I will repeat, if you don't play the videos back two or three times, you can miss key elements, key clues, i.e. golden nuggets. So watch the case studies videos back as many times as you need to get the information. And again, if you're using the app, you can enlarge the image. Those are some of the basic tips that I see in the classroom week in, week out. There's a lot more than that, but I don't want to drag the video out. So hopefully you can use some of those things to improve your chance of passing the theory test first time. So hopefully you got some benefit from it. So definitely like, comment below and subscribe to help other people see this channel. 
with the YouTube algorithm. YouTube's gonna show your video here. I'm gonna show your video here. Go off and watch which one's relevant to you and I shall catch you in that video.